Hey guys, Winston for Carbide3D here. A question we get just about every day is, what kind of end mills would you recommend I buy? And the honest answer is, we don't know. The answer to that question really depends on what you want to make. If you're cutting out big wooden signs, you're going to need a very different set of tools than someone who's milling tiny jewelry pieces. There is no one-size-fits-all end mill shopping list that we can give you. But what we can give you is some basic information about which end mills are appropriate for which applications so that you can make the best decision for yourself. Let's start off with our general purpose uncoated end mills. Examples of these include the 100 series tools like the 101 through the 122, as well as quarter inch shank end mills like the 201 and 202. These American made solid carbide end mills will work in just about any material we recommend our CNCs for wood, plastic, non ferrous metals, and more. Flat cutters will cut out flat bottom pockets or straight walls. Ball end mills are good for cutting 3D surfaces. The diameter of the cutter is also important. The skinnier the end mill, the finer the features you'll be able to machine. But these end mills need to be treated more gently. Eighth inch and quarter inch diameter end mills like the 102 and 201 will be great for woodworking type applications on the shape Oko, where you want a sturdy cutter to quickly cut out basic shapes or mill out pockets. The longer flute length will also help you deal with thicker materials. The 102 8th inch end mill has a half inch of flute length and the 201 has 3 quarters of an inch of flute length. Generally, you don't want to cut deeper than your flutes as the shank will start to burnish or rub against your stock material. You can bend the rules a little here, but we suggest not straying too far from the maximum advertised depth of cut for each end mill. Smaller end mills, especially ones with a tapered shoulder, will simply not be able to mill channels deeper than their flutes. Now, plain carbide upcutting end mills will work across a broad range of materials, but with a few small tweaks to geometry or coating, they can be specialized for certain applications. Our tools with a dash Z suffix are zirconium nitride coated. This treatment helps reduce the tendency of aluminum, which is a relatively soft metal, from building up on the cutter. That doesn't make them impossible to clog, but it will help tip the odds in your favor. Another thing that can help you improve your aluminum machining is to use single flute end mills. Instead of having two or three smaller cutting flutes, these end mills only have one larger flute. This gives chips ample room to pass out of the cutting zone and further improves your odds of completing a cut without clogging your end mill. Single flute end mills also reduce torque requirements on the spindle since the end mill is making half or a third the number of slices per second into your stock for a given RPM. That's really good news for lightweight machines like the Nomad. In wood, plywood, or MDF, a down cutting end mill may be advantageous because the cutting action of the rotating end mill will naturally mat down the fibers, preventing them from tearing out or chipping. Up cutting end mills act just like drill bits, they're constantly trying to pull material upwards. Down cutting end mills do the opposite. If you're looking for a down cutting end mill, we offer the 251 quarter inch down cutting end mill, as well as two options from Amana. Compression end mills will give you the best of both worlds. They pull material up at the tip and push down from above, so you can get really clean walls on both the top and bottom surfaces when contouring with one. If you want to do engraving or v-carving, you'll need v-bits. These cutters taper to a point and allow you to create large but detailed features fast. They're a staple in sign making and woodworking. We offer two v-cutters in 90 and 60 degree flavors as well as the RC1148 in the Amana starter pack. The geometry of these cutters works great in wood, but we wouldn't recommend that they be used in aluminum. End mills for aluminum need to have a much more aggressive angle on the cutting edge. If you want to trace really fine lines, the PCB engravers that we sell will do more than engrave PCBs. They'll mark aluminum just fine or even small amounts of steel if you're really careful about it. If you want to maximize your odds of success in plastics, specialized single flute end mills might be worth taking a look at. Plastic-specific end mills tend to have the most aggressive angles on their cutting edges and extra deep flutes for better chip evacuation. We offer a set of Amana end mills just for this purpose. Do note that the sharper cutting edges and deeper flutes come at the expense of outright strength, so an aluminum cutting end mill could conceivably be used on plastic, but not vice versa. At the end of the day, before you start buying up exotic and expensive end mills, try a basic carbide end mill first. Unless you're machining steel, a general-purpose, uncoated cutter will get you pretty far. I hope this video gives you an idea of some of the factors you need to weigh when shopping for end mills. How detailed are your features? How deep do you need to cut? What kind of materials will you be cutting? The answers to those questions will dictate what kind of cutter you'll need for your project. 
If you're still feeling stumped after watching this video though, feel free to reach out to our sales team who can help point you in the right direction. Until next time, good luck and have fun machining folks.